So as part of the DMS-10 project, um, we need to make it talk to all the other switches that we have in the museum. And that's kind of an inter interesting project on its own um, because in addition to the D4 being um, a digital switch in terms of routing calls from customer to customer attached to that switch itself, it also talks digitally to other switches, to the rest of the world, or it can talk digitally. And so that gives us kind of new opportunities to um, uh, connect it to the rest of the switches in different ways that we haven't really explored as much before. Um, so uh, part of that uh, story is that we need to use more of the D4 bank. So, so the D4 bank is um, a piece of transmission gear and its job is to change analog lines into digital T1s. This is like its only job. Um, and so the Bell system used that um, all over. They used it extensively so that they could get more trunks going from office to office um, using less cable, not having to run a single pair for every single trunk they needed, but instead being able to put many trunks onto digital T carrier and then cut down on the amount of outside plant wiring that they needed. So we have a D4 bank. Um, we've been using it in the museum for a long time now um, for things like the call simulator, uh, interfacing to asterisk, um, anything where we want to make uh, our analog switches talk to a computer, we typically use the D4 bank for that. Um, it does that job of converting digital to analog and analog to digital. So for the DMS-10, we're going to expand our usage of that. Um, we're going to bring up more channels on this so that the D4 will be able to talk digitally to the D4 bank. Sorry, the DMS-10 will be able to talk digitally to the, D, uh, to the D4 bank. And the D4 bank will then speak analog to the crossbar switches and the panel switch. So another thing that AdTrain included when they uh, sent the switch to us is uh, what's called uh, a MUX, a multiplexer. Um, and so this is a really cool piece of hardware that we've never had a chance to play with before. Um, and its job is to take, um, take individual T1s, also known as DS1s. Um, so each one of those DS1s has 24 um, voice circuits on it. And what it's going to do is it's going to take several of those DS1s and it's going to combine them all onto, a sing onto two pairs of wires. Um, so this multiplexing is sort of yet another uh, way to get more data onto a smaller amount of individual wires. So you, again, save on um, the cost of running cables. So this means that instead of having to run individual T1s from downstairs where we have the DMS, upstairs um, where we have all the analog switches, um, we can actually combine all the DS1s that we're going to need onto a single um, pair of coaxial cables. So this pair um, of cables is what we ran from downstairs, where we have a MUX like this, to upstairs, where they're going to go to this MUX. And then those are going to be broken out into those individual DS1s that will go to the D4 bank. And that will then give us our analog lines to all the switches. So um, this whole frame is basically where we have most of the digital equipment that's uh, uh, in the, on the third floor of the museum. So um, this basically starts with a big Cisco switch up here that um, does all of our uh, ethernet um, patch panels going uh, for ethernet. Um, we just added a new fuse panel to um, distribute power to uh, pieces of equipment in this frame that run off of 48 volts. Um, we have a patch panel that are individual uh, lines going to the D4 bank. Um, we have a box that we've not used before, which is a kind of um, monitoring and um, status reporting box for um, telco gear. 
This is a patch panel where all of those DS1s um, will get broken out. Um, and then normally they will be wired from um, one place to another, uh, but these uh, jacks here give you the ability to plug into individual T1s um, and test them, see if there's anything wrong with them, um, do any sort of diagnostics you need. So we have our diagnostic box for the DS1s down here on a shelf and it's just sort of monitoring one of the T1s that we're using and everything looks good. So we will add another patch panel for T1s coming from the DMS10 here. Um, we have the MUX, which breaks out the DS3s from downstairs uh, into DS1s. Um, below that, we have a, a, a new to us box. This is a Genban G2, um, which we're going to try and use for SIP. So we'll be able to do um, VoIP to T1 interfacing through the Genban box, um, and that'll give us a lot of uh, interesting things to try connecting to the DMS10. We already mentioned the DS1, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the, the test gear, um, and then the rest is uh, analog stuff from other parts of the museum. So we are still making progress on wiring the DMS-10 back together. A lot of these cables that were previously up in the ceiling just to get them out of the way, uh, we now actually have routed to the correct frames where we're going to um, start plugging them back in. Um, so these are all the cables coming from the network going to um, various uh, peripherals. We have it, all of the power wiring in place now. So. Um, everything comes from the set of circuit breakers in the middle and goes to the individual, the individual frames. That is now in place. Um, we have the power cable coming from um, upstairs um, and where it shares power with the 3 ESS. Um, so that's in place now. Um, we have not turned anything on yet because we want to sort of get as much um, to be messing around with it as little as possible once we do have power uh, turned on in the frame. So for the moment, we're just doing all the cabling while it is um, powered off. Uh, also, we got kind of a Christmas present. Uh, our good friend Deviant called me up and said that he knew of a location that was retiring a DMS 500, and he was curious if we needed anything. So we worked with Deviant and some others uh, to take a look at this machine and see, you know, what all we could salvage because everything was getting melted down for scrap and it was getting shoveled out the door as fast as it could. So um, we thought initially that we had some time uh, to make these decisions, but then I got a message saying, hey, you know, if you want this, better come get it now because there are getting it out the door as quickly as they possibly can. So I booked a flight right away um, to this undisclosed location. And yeah, we got a ton of stuff. Um, a lot of line cards. So these are, these are the digital interface for customer lines. Um, they're very cool but very simple little devices. Analog telephone goes in one end and digital representation of the analog telephone comes out the other end. And you need one of these, normally, one of these per telephone line. Um, those go in this bay here, which is the LCE bay. Um, our LCE bay is, it's kind of silly to call it eBay. <laughs> our LCE bay is pretty sparsely populated in this machine. So it's nice that we got about a thousand additional line cards, which means we can have an additional thousand lines or thereabouts uh, in this switch. And we also got a bunch of other goodies as well, like uh, power supplies, ringing supplies, various spare parts, and a couple of interesting test bays, which maybe can go somewhere in an empty space if we can find one. Um, so the good part about all that is that this switch will be uh, pretty well kitted out once it's all up and running. And of course, this is all future problem kind of stuff because I think what's gonna happen is when we're ready to turn it on, we're gonna try to boot it up in sort of the same configuration it was shut down in to a point. Um, because we're hoping that if we don't 
change things too drastically, it should come up from its deep sleep and kind of be mostly happy. It's going to complain about some stuff, but once we get it all situated and calmed down, uh, then we can start playing around and adding stuff to it, which will be a whole new adventure. Was talking to Colin and he was saying it's looking like January end of might be a good time to start it up. Um, we'll see. It really depends on how many more roadblocks are in our way, but we hope to get it turned on real soon. Until then.